All right, this video is Unit 10, Lesson 1, covering rational parent function and proper rational form. This is our start uh, at looking at rational functions. So a rational function is the ratio of two polynomials. So we have polynomial p of x divided by another polynomial q of x. Remember in the last unit we discussed polynomials and what polynomials are and what they aren't. The rational parent function, so the um, main rational function that we start with is f of x equals 1 divided by x. And if we sketch a graph of that, it looks like this. Put in our coordinate plane here. And looks like this. It's in the first quadrant and also in the second quad uh, pardon me, the third quadrant here and it would have the point 1 comma 1 right there and the point negative 1 negative 1 right there so those are two of the anchor points that we will use it does have a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote so it is a discontinuous function this is also known as the reciprocal function and is a hyperbola which is one of the conic sections Notice this is an odd function due to its symmetry about the origin. So if you reflect this quadrant one section over the y-axis and then again over the x-axis, it would lay on top of itself here. So it is symmetrical about the origin, and by definition that makes it an odd function. The domain of this rational parent function is x cannot equal zero because of the vertical asymptote right here. It never reaches an x-coordinate of zero there. x cannot equal zero. The range will be similar. It is y cannot equal zero because of the horizontal asymptote right here. The horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. There is a horizontal line, an imaginary horizontal line right here where that asymptote is where the graph approaches but never touches. Then we have a vertical asymptote here at x equals zero. Remember, vertical lines are x equals a number, horizontal lines are y equals a number, so we give those vertical asymptotes uh, linear equations to describe them. And it has a discontinuity at x equals zero. All right, now for example one, graph the following transformations of f of x equals one over x. I like to rewrite these the way these examples are written. They have a slash here for the division there, and I like to rewrite them this way. So it would be 1 over x plus 3, and then I'm also going to write that subtract 4 over here, like this, instead of in the front. It could be here. That's fine. It means the same thing. That's the way they, they have it. Scribble that out. They have it written like this, but I prefer uh, to write it like this. So we want to make a sketch of this first thing. So we'll put our coordinate plane in. And the transformations for rational functions are the same as all other functions we've worked with. So when you're with x, it's left and right opposite of the sign. So this would be a left 3 for this part right here. And out away from x, it's up and down with the sign. So that would be a down 4. So when we're working with this, we will basically move the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So we will move the uh, vertical asymptote left three. So instead of being on the y-axis here, it would normally be right here like this. We are going to take it and move it to the left three. So we'll put a dash line in there to denote that uh, or a vertical asymptote there. And then the horizontal asymptote would normally be across here like this, across the x-axis, but we will be moving that down 4, so it would be at a y value of negative 4. So we'll put that in right here. So this is our y equals negative 4 horizontal up here. They want another color. This would be our x equals negative 3 vertical asymptote. And then we just put the graph in there. So it would be here in this section and here in this section. There were no reflections at all, so it ends up being the upper right and lower left part of the graph. 
So the domain here is x cannot equal, notice it will always be in this form for rationals, these basic rationals, x cannot equal negative 3 in this case. It never touches this x value of negative 3 because of the vertical asymptote. Range, similar in form, it is y cannot equal negative 4 because of the horizontal asymptote here. Horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 4. Vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 3. Notice these numbers keep repeating here. Negative 3 for the x part, negative 4 for the y. And discontinuities, again, at x equals negative 3. And remember, a discontinuity is just one way we define it. When you're graphing, you have to pick your pencil up at that value. So that is what you would have to do if you're sketching this graph. You sketch this part and this part. You have to pick your pencil up at negative 3, causing a discontinuity. So for these vertical asymptotes, everywhere we have a vertical asymptote, we will also be discontinuous there for that function. All right, now for example 2, I've gone ahead and rewritten this and put in a coordinate plane here. Uh, I don't like the way they put the slash in there. I like to write it with a horizontal uh, division bar there. So I rewrote it, negative 1 over x minus 4 plus 2. So we need to identify the transformations here. This would be right 4. It's with x, so left and right opposite of the sign, so right 4. This is out away from x, so up and down with the sign, so that would be up 2. And then we have this negative in the very front of the function, so that would reflect over the x-axis. That would make our y values opposite, so that will reflect over the x-axis. So we'll start by graphing in our horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So right 4 would put the vertical over here at an x value of 4. So label that x equals 4 over here. And then up 2 would move the horizontal asymptote up 2. So that would be across here like this. And then we need to plot the graph in. So the reflection, normally we would graph here and here in those sections, but we were reflecting over the x-axis, so that's going to put it here and here. So it'll be lower right, upper left section of our grid there. So in here like this. All right, so the domain is x cannot equal positive 4, because that's where our vertical asymptote is. The range is y cannot equal positive 2, because that's where our horizontal asymptote is. All other y's are good, all other x's are good except 4, all y's are good except 2. So it touches everything except those. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, vertical asymptote at x equals 4, and discontinuities at x equals 4. So that answers example 2. One more thing that we need to put in, we should put this point here and here. And that point, similar to when we graph the parent function, this point will be one away in the x direction from the vertical asymptote and one away uh, from the horizontal asymptote in the y direction. So this point right here would be right 1 from 4, so the x coordinate would be 5, and one below the y coordinate here was 2, so that would be one below that would be 1. So that point is 5, 1. This point up here, similarly, will be one above the horizontal asymptote for the y-coordinate, so at 3, and the x-coordinate would be one left of the vertical asymptote, so one left from 4 would be at 3, so 3, 3 for that point. We should put those in. All right now, for example 3, write the function that produces this graph. So we look at it and we can see that it's uh, graphed in the upper right and lower left uh, position from the asymptotes, so we just need to track where those asymptotes are. Uh, the vertical asymptote is at negative 1, 2, 3. So we have a VA, we'll abbreviate, vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, 2. So that's been moved up to. So we just need to write this function so that the original parent function 1 over x is moved to the left 3 and up 2. So we want to write it so it's left 3 and up 2. Now to write the function, it would be f of x is equal to 1 over. So if we want to move left 3, we need an x plus 3 in the denominator. 
and then if we want to move up two, we need a plus two out here. So that would be the answer to example three. One over x plus three plus two. All right now the last concept. A rational function in proper rational form has the degree of the numerator less than the degree of the denominator. If a rational function is not in proper rational form, long division can be used to get it in proper rational form. So in other words, if we have, for example, the largest exponent in the numerator, let's just say it's 3x to the fourth, and we had a, for example, 2x squared in the denominator, to be in proper rational form, the degree of the numerator has to be less. So this is degree four, this is degree two, so that would not be. If it were switched the other way around, and we had a square here and a fourth power here, then that is in proper rational form because the degree of the numerator is two, degree of denominator four, degree of the numerator is less, so that's okay. So in other words, shortcut this, you want the smallest exponent to be in the numerator. Okay, smallest exponent has to be in the numerator but when you're comparing the two. So the degree in the numerator has to be the smallest. All right, so with that said, let's look at this example in more detail. I'm going to get rid of this section right here. Okay, example four, put f of x equals three x squared minus x plus two over x minus one in proper rational form. Again, it's not in proper rational form because the degree of the numerator is two, the degree of the denominator is one. So we can do long division on this to get it back into proper rational form. We will have a remainder which will be still in rational form. So let's take a look at what happens with this. So x minus one, and we're dividing three x squared minus x plus two by that. So what times x gives me three x squared? That would be three x. It gives me a three x squared here. 3x times negative 1 would be minus 3x here. Long division, we always subtract, so those cancel. Flip this to a plus. Negative x plus 3x gives me 2x. Bring down the next term, plus 2. So now what times x gives me 2x? That would be plus 2. 2 times x, 2x. 2 times negative 1, minus 2. Flip those signs, because we're subtracting always. So 2 plus 2 is 4. So nothing left to bring down, so my remainder is four. So I put my remainder is a plus four. I put it over what I was dividing by originally. So this is in proper rational form. It's the same thing as our original function here, but now it's in proper rational form. So if we write it out, three x plus two plus four over the quantity x minus one. So this is equivalent to this but now it's in proper rational form. Why? Because degree of the numerator is zero. There are no variable terms with exponents, so that's degree zero. The denominator is degree one, so numerator less, the degree is less than the denominator, so it is in proper rational form. All right, that's it for lesson one.